All right, so walk cycles. This is a little rig. I think it's in my public order. I didn't announce it or talk about it anywhere. Um, but this just has an unoccupied avatar walking. Um, you can slow it down, mess with the camera here. But if we click go here, then it turns into me walking. Uh, unfortunately, the inspector can't be swapped, so I've got to grab me as I walk past. If you go up to the root of an avatar, and you scroll down till you find it. Just keep going till you see the word gate, basically. Keep going till you see the word gate. Here it is, gate. Uh, so this is gates, and these determine how the walk cycle works. Uh, let me clear inspectors, uh, and then adjust the camera a little bit there. See, there we go. Um, these are gates, and uh, these gates are selected based on your velocity, and that can be kind of confusing for editing. So what I recommend when you're editing gates is to just clear the list down so that you've only got one gate, set the minimum velocity to uh, zero, and then you know that you're already always doing that walk. Uh, and then you can go and start editing the properties here. So um, a good one to understand first of all is the feet range. Um, <laughs> I'm always talking about feet somehow. Uh, anyway, um, feet range. Actually, let me just slow this down. Uh, where are we? Cycle speed ratio. Yeah, there we go. So now we've slowed it down far too far. But if you change speed ratio, it slows down the walk cycle. So you can see now I'm I'm moving at the same speed, but my feet are moving a lot slower. I'm sort of doing. Actually, this would be kind of a good walk for like a giant or something, right? You know, they've got very heavy feet. Um, but we will speed that up a little bit. Let's try three. No, that's the wrong one. Five tutorials, they're great. Um, three goes not, oh, fine, 23. Okay, that's much better. That's much better. So uh, that is you know, a different walk cycle. But let's go back to it. So feet range is how far the feet move uh, within a sort of box um, that's attached to where your avatar is. So if you imagine like a, a box being drawn to where uh, the center of your avatar is, feet range is how far they can extend from that. There's no Z, it's just X and Y, um, because Z is covered by the avatar moving forward. So if I wanted the feet to be uh, reaching, so if we're doing like really big leaps um, of, of movement, I can expand that. And now you'll see I'm I'm sort of prancing. I'm doing a prance. <laughs> and I can reset that and I'll go back to the regular walk. Um, if I change this number to be higher than it is, it will change how high I raise the feet. So now, now I'm basically doing a Cyberman walk. For those who don't know, that's a Doctor Who villain that walks and when they walk, they lift their feet much higher than a, a regular person would because they're cyborgs basically. Um, so that is the feet range for you. Uh, cycle height bias, I can't remember what that one does. Um, uh, cycle ground ratio is how long during the cycle your feet are on the ground. So if you change this to one, uh, you'll shuffle. And it looks ridiculous because I'm shuffling at like quite a speed. Let me see if I can just slow down this uh, speed a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So now we're sort of shuffling. Um, and if we were to change that to, where are we, cycle ground ratio, if we change that to like a really high, uh, sorry, a really low number, then we get a sort of uh, lofty walk. This reminds me of, um, there's a lot of sort of like martial arts films where someone um, like runs in like a floaty way, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon Star, right? Their feet aren't on the ground a lot. They're mostly in the air because they're doing, you know, martial arts that make them fly <laughs> uh, but you'd probably want to change the feet range bias here on, sorry the feet range on x here to make that a bit larger and then it would look uh yeah that's sort of what i was going for right i need to watch crouching target hidden dragon again that, that film is just like a fever dream of craziness um so that's cycle ground ratio 
these foot raise begin height and foot raise end height um, are about the uh, the way that the foot goes up and down. I've kind of forgotten those ones as well, though. Uh, foot rest angle and foot raise angle are the difference in angle when you're lifting your foot. So if you imagine yourself walking now, the first part of your walk, your toes are sort of point, pointed downwards a little bit as you lift your foot from the ground. That changes that. Uh, and foot rest angle is it resting on the floor. So this changes when it when it raises. So if I made this really drastic, when I step here, you'll see that now there's a 45 degree angle um, between my toes and the heel. Uh, I need to make this ground ratio more normal. One second. There you go. So you see, I, I'm I'm now doing. I think it's called pigeon toe walking as pigeon toes, right? Um, uh, children often do this, and they're fitted with special feet. Um, um, special feet. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's something wrong with your feet. I've got to replace them. Uh, they're fitted with uh, special shoes to to combat this style of walking. But but there you go. You've got that. That's really good for a sort of strut. In fact, I am strutting. Look at me strutting. <laughs> so that's that one. Uh, let's see what we've got. Uh, slip ratio is how how much they slide when they're on the ground. Um, slip ratio could be good for like ice and stuff like that. So if we up this to eight, um, you'll see there's a lot more sort of movement on the ground. The foot isn't stationary on the ground; it's sort of sliding, almost like moonwalking. Yeah. Now the most important fun one I like is forward offset. This is a sort of lean as you're walking. Um, so if we make this extreme, you'll see I'm now leaning forwards a lot whilst running. And, uh, whoops. So yeah, now I'm leaning forwards as I, as I run. Um, and so if I had arms here, I could do Naruto running, right? I just, uh, put my arms behind my back and that looks like a Naruto run. I can also make this forwards. Um, so if we do positive, then I'll lean back. If you made this like a really small number, you could do sort of like a, a larger character might walk with leaning back a little bit. Because uh, their, their center of gravity has changed. And then speed ratio is, uh, you know, how, how, how many times the walk cycle occurs during um, that. So you can slow it right down. This will be like a really slow walk. And then this will be a really, actually, why don't we just do this? Yes, there we go. Now you've got Sonic going on. You could probably do a really good Sonic one. You'd have to change the raise heights and stuff. So there you go, there's basic things. Like I said, I don't know every property there, but you can just keep messing with it. Once you know good values, I recommend adding back in the velocities, right? Because then you can have gates. Uh, if you if you don't understand gates enough, I think you'd you know, look at horse riding just for like five minutes because horses have very, very clear gates based on how they walk and how you're riding them. Um, they do like a, a walk, a trot, a canter, I think it's called. Um, and all of those are sort of like increasing in speed and it changes fundamentally how the horse moves. This one's funny. This looks like a Looney Tunes one. But yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want that, you do positive. You see, now you know this sort of thing, um, Anadir, you can, you can take a look at a character like that and make that walk. But uh, that's it for the, that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content, let me know.